The zone. Every stalker knows the name, but most don't have a clue what the zone really is. Hello stalkers and welcome to the Anomalous Dugout. In this video, we will try to answer some of the most asked questions in the stalker universe. What is the zone? How did it come about? And is it really growing? Historically, what we call the zone is a 30 km exclusion area around the Chernobyl power plant, which was set up after the radioactive disaster of 1986. Basically, the explosion at the station released radioactive particles in the air that made the nearby locations too dangerous to live in. So the zone was evacuated and a forbidden frontier was created to prevent anyone from entering. This is what happened in real life. In the universe of the Stalker games, the name The Zone took another meaning after the second disaster in 2006, during which an anomalous area was created on top of the already existing radioactive zone. So it seems that The Zone actually designates both the radioactive area as well as the anomalous area. In practice, The Zone is a large area around Chernobyl, cordoned by the military, inside which radiations, strange anomalies and mutants can be found. But that does not explain what the zone really is. So let's go back to the events that created the said zone. There are several sources that depict such events, like the PDA Encyclopedia, the intro of Call of Pripyat, Clear Sky's official website and the old design documents. These sources do not describe the events the exact same way, but the general idea is the same. On April 12, 2006, a new explosion took place near the power plant, covering the area with insanely bright light, evaporating the clouds and triggering a strong earthquake. Most of the personnel working in the zone died during this event, which became known as the Second Disaster. Sometime after that, apparently on June 10th, the very first emission occurred, which made the zone grow by 5 kilometers. For the people who knew that the exclusion zone was full of secret laboratories, it became clear that this disaster was the result of a man-made experiment. And it was indeed. A team of scientists, called the Group, was working on the Noosphere, which is actually a real-life concept. Basically, the noosphere is a state of the biosphere, that is, the entirety of the living creatures of the planet, which regroups all the rational thinking and reasoning. In the universe of Stalker, the noosphere is described as a special informational field, the so-called noosphere. It includes all the inhabitants of the planet, with cognitive abilities. So the story of the games makes it clear that the Noosphere is actually a real field, and not just a philosophical concept. Getting back to our group of scientists, their goal was to modify the Noosphere in order to remove some emotions, such as anger, greed, and cruelty from the mind of humans. Normal people cannot alter the Noosphere. So the members of the group connected their minds to create an entity called the Sea Consciousness, or Common Consciousness. This entity was indeed able to modify the Noosphere, but not in the way they wanted, and this mistake created a rift in the Noosphere. This rift is what caused the creation of the zone. Unfortunately, we don't learn much more from discovering the secrets of the games. The zone is simply said to be a crack in the Earth's noosphere. But with that information, we can make many theories. So let's see what some of the main characters in the games tell us about the zone. The first opinion on the zone that you can get is from Sidrovich. And he says that the zone is bizarre and weird, and it feels like it is not part of this world. However, 
it doesn't really care why the zone exists and what it is. The only thing that matters to him is that the zone is a wonderful opportunity to make business and to earn a lot of money. This point of view seems to be shared by a lot of stalkers who come to the zone in an attempt to become rich. The zone is so impossible to understand that they simply don't even try to make any sense of it. Then there is Duty, a faction that is actively fighting the zone. According to General Krylov and Lieutenant Colonel Shulga, the zone is like a living organism. It is alive and it wants to stay alive, and even more, it wants to spread around much like a disease. The stalkers of the duty faction have seen the dangers and the horrors happening in the zone and they fear that it would spread to the outside world. And that is why they believe that the zone must be destroyed. Or, if that is not possible, at least contained. However, there were other stalkers that disagreed with duty. Not on the fact that the zone is dangerous, but on the idea that it should be destroyed at all costs. These stalkers went on to create Freedom, a faction that believes the zone is a great opportunity for mankind. They don't see it as an opportunity to make money like Sidrovich does, but rather as an opportunity to make wonderful discoveries that would improve the life of humans on a global scale. Of course, this sounds idealistic, but considering that artifacts have anti-gravity, fast organic tissue regeneration, and other insanely useful properties, the applications would be limitless in the outside world. Chekhov also points out the fact that the zone is able to react to the behavior of its inhabitants, an idea developed by a stalker named Hermit. Hermit thinks that coming into the zone with weapons and devices only makes the zone more dangerous for you, as mutants will be more likely to attack. This theory would later go on to be proven by Professor Ozersky, who explains that technological devices draw the attention of mutants and make them more aggressive. Moreover, Hermit believes that the zone is like a test, and that it will only give you what you expect from it. For example, if you think like duty that the zone is a dangerous place full of mutants, then mutants will attack you very often. On the contrary, if you think like freedom that the zone is a symbol of liberty, then you will find your freedom in it. All of these ideas of course require scientific research, which brings us to the opinion of the ecologists. And well, it's rather disappointing. You would think that the scientists would be the ones that are able to tell you the most about the zone, but surprisingly that doesn't seem to be the case. Professor Sakharov only talks about psi emissions and zombies, not a word on the zone as a global phenomenon. And Herman and Ozersky say that they don't know much about the zone just yet, since they only arrived a week before the events of Call of Pripyat. Still, Ozorsky has an interesting theory about the zone, that it is the consequence of an unknown force, which is neither electromagnetic nor mechanical, and not radiations either. Yes. Then there is Kruglov, who has an opinion similar to Freedom's. He believes that the zone is a wonderful gift to humanity, a treasure for science that could offer solutions to some of the world's problems such as hunger, incurable disease, etc. However, unlike freedom, he would prefer if stalkers did not interfere with the zone and its research by the scientists. Finally, we get to the opinion of Clear Sky, which is probably the most valuable since these characters were part of the group that created the experiment leading to the creation of the zone. Professor Binpolev rejects all the common opinions about the zone, such as the zone is evil, the zone is a gift, or an opportunity to get rich. He thinks that it is impossible for us humans to fully understand the zone, and that the zone cannot be destroyed and will not disappear.
Thus, the goal of the Clear Sky faction is to study the zone, to try to comprehend it, at least from our point of view, in order to be able to coexist with the zone. Clear Sky knows that the appearance of the zone was caused by human experiments, and Lebedev even says that they know more than stalkers and the government combined. But it appears that all this information was lost along with the whole faction. Personally, I think that the rift in the noosphere is leaking energy. Maybe connected to the unknown force Ozersky was talking about, which is used to power anomalies and other strange phenomena happening there. I mean, have you noticed that there are many electrical lights in the zone that seem to work even though their power source should have been shut down long ago? I think that this power comes from the crack in the noosphere. But what is your theory? Be sure to write it down in the comments. Duty is claiming it over and over. The zone is growing. But is this just propaganda inspired by stalker rumors? Or is the zone really expanding? To answer this question we search for any bit of info or evidence, but there is not that many. Apart from the usual duty talk, the only character that clearly states that the zone is growing is the sea consciousness representative. The zone is growing. We are trying to restrain its expansion, but humanity seems to be intent on hindering our work. If the zone is really a leak in the noosphere, it is possible that this crack is expanding. That would make sense. But can we really trust the sea consciousness representative? Maybe he is just lying in order to convince Strela to join them instead of turning against them. So we cannot be sure that what he says is actually true. Another thing said by the sea consciousness representative is that the zone is very unstable. And that really seems to be the case. Indeed, the very nature of anomalies combined with the fact that they change with every unpredictable emissions seems to confirm the instability of the area. Yes. Furthermore, Professor Herman mentions that the zone is evolving, with serious changes in the form of a weakening of the magnetic field. We don't really know what that means and if this has anything to do with the possible growth of the zone, but it sounds like instability to me. So what other evidence do we have? Well, some random stalkers say that they believe in the rumors that the zone is growing, because monsters that used to be only found in the center of the zone, aka bloodsuckers, can now be seen in the outskirts. However, as even Dutiers point out, this does not mean that the anomalous zone is expanding, but that the mutant population is. It is important to remember that mutants, and especially humanoid ones, for the most part, are not related to the zone, but to the secret labs. This means the fact that they live in the zone is just a coincidence. Knowing this, we cannot really consider that an expansion of the mutant population is linked to an expansion of the zone itself. Another phenomenon worth mentioning is the possibility for certain artifacts to create anomalies. According to Yar, Freedom has discovered that some artifacts can be used to generate anomalies. Actually, some consider artifacts as the fruits of the zone, and what if they are like seeds that can spread anomalies? If that's the case, the world is in great danger, since artifacts are making their way out of the zone. If you remember, we said in the first part about the origins of the zone, that the very first emission, which happened a bit after the second disaster, made the zone grow by 5 kilometers. That is actually the only official evidence that we have of a zone growth. But does that mean that the zone expands with each emission? Well, according to a tale narrated by Barkeep, 
Blowouts are created when a stalker reaches the center of the zone and makes a wish to the monolith. The story tells of someone who found himself very close to the CNPP when the zone appeared. This person climbed inside the reactor and found the monolith and made the first wish. That would have been the reason for the very first emission that happened shortly after the creation of the zone. And the story also says that with each wish, the following blowout makes the zone grow. However, we know that the wish granter is fake. And if emissions really make the zone grow, then why is nobody talking about it in clear sky when blowouts are so frequent? Finally, there is Freedom and one of their leaders, Loki, who explicitly says that the zone is not growing. Does he really believe that, or does he simply say it to oppose duty? As you can see, the info is all over the place, and the answer really isn't clear. To conclude, I would say this. Rumors claim that the zone is growing, but there is no real proof. Hopefully the situation will get clearer in Stalker 2. At least I hope so. And that's it for this video about the zone. I hope I didn't forget anything too important. Be sure to let me know if that's the case. As for now, I thank you for watching, stalkers. And goodbye.